Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Lady Gang. I'm Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight. I feel like I'm on the set of a movie because <laughs> it's the uh, hurry up and wait. Yeah. You know, we, this is what happens when you're your own tech crew. Yeah, this is this is why we started a podcast so that we never had to show our faces or deal with yeah. cameras. But yeah. then, you know, media is evolving and apparently you idiots want to see our faces as well as hear our voices. So it really is a bummer. It is such a bummer, you guys. Podcasting but don't forget, so easy. subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, people do love to see us um, on the, the, our YouTube is growing. I, know, I think we're at like crazy. almost 7,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, Lady Gang, d- the, the youtube.com slash Lady Gang. Um, but <laughs> yeah, the cameras are the bane of our existence. Um, my, uh, well, I want to start. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's time, time for... for- Good week. Yes, it is. Bad week. Oh, no. Okay, so my good week is that, you know, I hired a new assistant, Derek, and we're still learning each other. It's been a couple weeks. He's Uh, wonderful, and I like that you refer to him as Prince... Derek. Prince Derek. Because <laughs> it's so close to Prince Eric, which yeah. is a oh, Disney yeah. prince. Yeah. From Little Mermaid. Yes. 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 So, you know, it's times like these, like this morning. My good <clears throat> week is I have an assistant and I needed one my whole life. Mm-hmm. And living without one was terrible. And it's times like these, like this morning we, we wanted to record this episode. And I mean, it's been one tech issue after another for someone, for people that have literally had the same, been doing this for 10 years. Like the fact that the camera were like, how does the camera work? Oh my God. So we got here this morning and Jack, I was like, Jared, her husband edits the podcast. I'm like, Hey, did you bring the cards? And she's like, mother. I'm like, you had one job other I than being beautiful. Didn't even, didn't even cross my mind. And I was like last night, text Jack to bring the cards. Don't forget. And I was like, Jared won't let her forget. You know what? Jared's not in town. No, he's not in town. And to be honest, the cards might be with him. I don't even know if they're home, okay. but either way, I didn't even think about it. But anyway, what happened? It would have been a whole thing. It would have been a whole thing. But I said, Prince Derek, get your ass to Best Buy get the cards and, and get he back here. And he did in 30 minutes tops. Yep, that's even brought me a delicious, delicious drink to get my energy up. So I'm so happy he's around. And honestly, he's not the most techie person. So it's like, is he able to like, you know, our Alex who used to produce Lady Gang would be like, here's a Dropbox full of like your, you know, blood type. And I'd be like, oh wow, that's crazy how you got that. You know, like very organized. Derek's more like an emotional support puppy. You know, he's yeah. just following me around and he's just like, let me hold this for you because you're about to walk through the mud. And yeah. I'm like, yes. But that's what an assistant does. Yes. He's my personal yeah. friend. Oh. He's a friend with benefits. Kelsey hired a friend. Uh, mm. I hired my friend to just be around and be like, I just feel happy. Okay. So my bad week is so f- Kelty. This is one of the most iconic bad weeks I've ever had in my life. I'm on the set of E! News, brand new, you know, and I have two bosses. They're both named John. Boss John, um, they have a little seating area with maybe eight chairs. And sometimes people will bring their parents to watch the show or like there'll be a special guest from corporate or whatever. Like, I don't know who those people are ever, Mm -hmm. but I see two mom and dad, clearly a mom and dad sitting there and they're sitting. And then John is the only other real person on set. And I stand up and they obviously know they're at E! News and they're like, probably know who I am, but I don't know who they're. And I stand up and there's another guy that works there kind of in the area, but he's like more of a PA. So I thought he may be like helping them or whatever. I was like, oh my God, hi, so glad you could make it to the taping. Oh my God, this is amazing. What's your name? Like I'm meeting them saying hi. They stand up. They're like, we love you so much. I was like, great. And I was like, and you're Mrs. Redman. And she goes, oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm not John's. I'm not I'm, I'm this guy, like the PA's mom. I was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, oh my God. And John is sitting right there and he goes, yeah, my parents are dead. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Why cool. did you make the assumption? Because they, we were the only people in the room. And I just, and John, John had gotten out of his seat and was standing like to also say hi to them. So it's like, you know, when you bring your parents to set, you stand in a semicircle with them while they meet everyone. So I don't know why John was standing there. Like he was oh, just no. wanted to see me and be a part of my world. This falls under like the, I, if you're not exactly positive. hundred percent. I mean, he's but what are the he answered it, in a funny way. No, he was like, both of my parents are dead. And I was like, oh it's, my God. And I was just like, I've offended you. And it's day four of the 
job. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we have, we have a long relationship, but I just thought that is the keltiest thing mm-hmm. to be like, it was a simple mistake. I think that that is an easy mistake. I'm, you didn't, that's not really a Kelty thing. I'm trying to remember and well, to, to be nice and remember people's names and be like, Oh my God, I'm so nice. Are you Mrs. Redman? No. But was their son quite a bit younger than your boss? Yes. Yeah. So that would be <laughs> offensive. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's where it, could have offended the woman. Right. Cause because she would be like, oh, how could I be, how could I be 50 year old? <laughs> yeah. Or she's saying, it's just me being so your way older. of telling you her, she looks like she could be double the age of yeah. your boss. Guess what? I'm not being nice anymore. Oh. I'm done being nice. Okay. I'm not going to try no, to be social. Think... I'm going to stand on set and speak to no one. No, no, Kelsey, there's you got to keep your job. Yeah. There's, there's ways around this. Yeah. You know, you just go remember. over you and assume. you say, hi, I'm Kelty. Nice to meet you. Who, Who are, are you with? here to, yeah. with today? Which, lo- you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, th- should I go next? Mm-hmm. My bad week is that I am in an algorithm now of a lot of parenting experts by experts. I use quote experts <laughs> and mm-hmm. I'm sick of it. And <laughs> I just today on the flight over was somehow don't follow this person, but she says something along the lines of, I'm a child psychologist, and here are the five things I would never do as a parent. Oh, oh my God. God. Mm-hmm. And all five <laughs> of them, I, I do. I currently do and will do. Like Some what? he's not quite. Name one. Name them. Name them. The first one was you shouldn't ever tell, oh, you shouldn't force an apology out of your child until they're ready to apologize. Well, when my kid takes a Hot Wheels car and nails my beloved 10-year-old dog in her skull with it, I don't feel okay glossing over. Hope you realize that was wrong, Ford. He's two. How is he going to re- like get to a point where he's ready to apologize? He's going to forget about it. Well, I think the experts might tell me that it's sort of a wash at two, that you sort of have to just, mm, you no. know, redirect. The, the big experts tell you that you take the car and you say, you don't throw it at the dog, but you can throw it at the wall. So it's all oh. giving them all these, listen, uh, and I don't want any I mean, people you, DMing. I'm just going to say in my good week, bad week, you did just do that. You did good parenting for Kelty because you said maybe you don't say hi, oh, Mrs. Yes, Redmond. giving options. You, yeah. But you, then is that, honestly, you did good parenting with me. So you're the mom you. of the year. But thank is you. that when you get to like, you're like in math class and you're like two plus two is five and they're like, you need to think about it another way instead of being like, you're wrong. No, because I think at two, they don't have like, their brains don't know reasoning and they don't understand right. why they can't do things. I don't. I am not an expert. What's what's the age that you start telling them that they need to apologize? I don't know, but apparently this woman (laughs) thinks that it should just dawn on them that they should apologize. That's insane. She also says that you should never force your kid to share because it creates a scarcity mindset. But I'm like, I'm not going to be the dickhead at the park with my kid who has his little car and then a little girl comes over and wants to play with it. And I'm not going to say a word when the little girl clearly wants to play with the car as well. I'm going to be the person who says, Ford, you should share your car. Give so-and-so a chance to play with your card. your car. I just, and then the other one was don't pay your kids for chores, which eventually I'm going to, because I think it's good to instill in them that if you work hard at something, you get money out of it. Yeah. hundred percent. And then the other one was, oh, this is one that I'm horrible at. You shouldn't tell your child that they made mommy sad. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause then they're responsible for your emotions or you're telling them that they're responsible and that's not quite fair. But when he bitch slaps me in the face, and looks at me like he does not care at all. No empathy, no compassion. I sometimes will say that really hurt mommy and I it think, made me sad. I think you can say it hurt mommy. I think making you sad is too like emotionally manipulative. I get it. I know. <laughs> but it's just all these experts. They're just every single thing this woman said today, I am doing wrong. I just feel like the the things that her little rules are going to raise a bunch of like selfish kids. Yeah, I don't. It seems weird. I just, I don't know. But but anyways. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Yes. As the most, I mean, I'm not the most successful member of the lady gang, but I'm a, you know, a workhorse. Mm-hmm. Um, not getting the right kind of love in your childhood and also <laughs> want being highly motivated by money <laughs> is a fantastic personality trait. <laughs> so, I mean, socially, emotionally, maybe not, but like 
Ford's going to be rich. Yeah. And he's going to be successful. Did you get paid for your chores? A hundred percent. I used to clean the disc. Let me just tell you they about it. They also said not to bribe, which I also think is crazy. No, oh, I love a bribe. Yeah. So you cleaned what? I, my dad had a mechanic shop and you know, the men that work at a mechanic shop, I cleaned their bathroom. I cleaned oh, the toilets. Oh I cleaned both like the public one, which was lovely and stayed nice. And then there was a man room. And let me tell you something, when you work in a shop, I don't know if they still do this, but there's a vat of pink slime and it's actually like pig grease because they can't get the oil off their hands. So you just dip your hands in the greasy lard and that's what you use to wash your hands. The pubes, the pee. Ugh. <clears throat> I cleaned it all. I cleaned toilets twenty dollars for the full day every Saturday. It's a lot oh, of money wow. for a kid. Wow, that's back then. And I was 20s, stoked. That's a long of money. I was like, then I ran right to the Sherwood Park Mall <laughs> and went to the stationery store and picked out my pencils and fun <laughs> oh, wow. eraser tops that you could put on. Anyway, yeah. Beck, Becca, you're a fabulous mom. Thank yeah, you. I don't so know. Too. I've never seen you as a mom because I've yet to meet Ford because <laughs> I don't have any social skills. Um, but when I meet him when he's 12, yeah. I know he'll have turned he out right. He won't share with you. I don't care. That's I'm right. gonna have a I'll, buy my, I'll buy my own toys. Great. Thank you. I Great. love it. Um, my good week is just that this once a month flight to LA, I'm really in a groove. And you know, I, I had a period of my life where I would get very anxious to have to leave, especially early in the morning before the sun is up. There's something about mm -hmm. that Icky. where every moment you want to just bail, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I had a lot uh, of those moments. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, where I'm like, oh, maybe I should just cancel. Is it worth it? You know, and going through like worst case scenario. But now I've done it enough to where... I know the moment I get on the plane, I'm going to be happy that I'm on it. I'm yep. going to have a little bit of time to either sleep or work or watch something. Mm -hmm. And I know the minute I touch down in LA, even though LAX is hell on earth, mm -hmm. I still get a surge of excitement. And I never dread being here or coming here anymore, which is a big, big step. Because yeah. for a while, it was not the most fun. I almost said funnest, but... Mm, not a word. Not a word. <laughs> I thought it was a word, so. <laughs> but I'm really, I'm really happy this this new groove that we're in. Yeah, you know, I like. I it. feel like we're in a really good like. I even told you when you arrived and I could cry. I feel like we're in such a good lady gang place, and I know. there's there's such a good energy around the show and the podcast and. There's been so many messages on Instagram and in the Facebook group of like, you know, I fell off listening because my life got busy or I wasn't commuting anymore, or whatever. And then there's like every day there's a new message of someone who's in the group or has followed us on social, maybe wasn't listening to be like, you know, I went for a walk and I just turned you on and it's been a minute and I was just laughing so hard and I really missed you guys. And Aww. I'm like, welcome back. And they're like, I'm so happy to be back. I think so we went sweet. to this period where you know, after COVID, it was like we were getting our new normal of every across the board for everyone. And I just feel like we're making the best shows ever. I think we're in such a good place. And I'm just so, I'm so literally happy when I see you. And I just want to tell you about my life, which is like, am I not getting enough love? Am I Ford? Like, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm happy to see you. No, we do a good job of not keeping in touch when, yes. when we're not working. Like, I miss That's you what I was so say. much. We have enough distance mm -hmm. that it makes us excited when we're together. I know. There were a few periods of Lady Gang in the past few years where there was too much. Too much togetherness. And we were like, burnt the f*** out. Yeah. We were this Kelly Rowland nice. at the Today Show being like, do not ask me about Beyonce. Yes. I'm out. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I love anyway, it. I love you guys. Go us. Okay. Yay, Jack. Um, my good week is... I love you guys so much. <laughs> um, the main just finished their tour with Fall Out Boy. Ugh. And it was f***ing epic for like a million different reasons. Number one, they've never played a stadium before. These are like the biggest shows that they've ever played. The videos you've been posting have been insane. They're insane. They're like 18,000 people. It's so cool. It's so crazy. And they're so, it's really hard to be an opener for anything because number one, people aren't there, but there are people like, no, they're full. The videos full. that you show, they're full. But usually as an opener, yeah, there are like nobody. Comes I to usually, I never I go to an opener. opener or love yeah. the opener. I You're usually coming, go like, later. Right before. But by the time they like finish their set, it's like 95% full. They do this thing where like everybody puts up their phones during one of their songs. I, I mean, and the first day that they did it, I was so excited. I was there for the first show. Cause I'm like, I want to see the excitement. Like, cause yeah. it's the biggest show they'll ever play. And that's well, not no, true. That's not true. They have, they have played. played thus far. Um, 
And it was just such a moment. Jared was like, we all looked at each other, like when that moment was happening and we're like, we wanted to cry. Like it was so cool. It was so so cool. cool. Um, So I'm just so excited to see them playing big shows. I'm like, please headline (laughs) just this big one day. Um, But Fall Out Boy's been amazing. It was so cool that they that follow boy asked them. I know. How did that happen? Well, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but like, I know I'm a part of it. Oh. And I mean, I don't, nobody told me, but like Pete kind of inferred, we ran into Pete like, um, in Anaheim and he goes to Jared. He was like, I'm so excited that like we ended up touring together. And then he like also looks at me and he's like, you know, we finally did it. <laughs> Oh, I was like, cute. yes. Oh. Cute. But my good week is a by proxy good week for my mom. She came to the show and we had run into Pete this one time when we were in the hallway and we were like kind of like chatting, chatting. And then Jared and I were in the dressing room with my mom and he comes in and he was like, he goes to my mom, he goes, I knew I knew you from somewhere. You're famous on Jack's Instagram. Ah. <laughs> No, I love him. She will never forget it. She'll never forget. It was so cute. And he's just been the best. Like Fall Out Boy is the best band for them to tour with. They've been so nice to them. And usually when you tour with these like super successful bands, they don't give a shit. And they are just, they're the best. They're so nice. nice. Yeah. So that's my good week. I'm so excited for them. My bad week is I recently got this laser on my face. Mm -hmm. Um, It's the laser's been amazing. Yeah. I got it at Newport Cove Dermatology. They're great. But when I was in there, they were like numbing my face because it's really painful. And I was telling them, I like, I have a pa- high pain tolerance, blah, 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 blah. But one time when I got my lip filler dissolved, they gave me like a, I kept saying a dental dam. I was like, yeah, they like did the dental dam <laughs> shot. And I said it probably, I'm not kidding, 10 times because I was like, yeah, that's the only thing that's so painful that like I needed a dental dam. And I was telling Jared about it. He's like, isn't a dental dam the thing that women stick up their vagina for uh, protection when they have sex? It's kind of like a rubber squ- it's like a, handkerchief yeah. that you can... You shove up your... It's like a... It's woman birth control that you just like shove up your vagina And I said dental dam and this, my doctor is a doctor, the dermatologist, she's a doctor. I'm like, she knows what a dental dam is. It's a dental block that you like shoot. And I'm like, there's, she just like, let me keep saying that like 10 times. I also think a dental dam, this may be not right. No, No. I think it's actually specifically for oral sex so that you cover the area, but you can still get it in, get yeah. Oral the on the clitoris. I, I don't know if it would make sense. Penis. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if a penis is involved in a dental dam or if it's yeah. just oral. That's such a. There's so many hoops to go through. It's mm. for oral sex. I guess there used to be more rampant STDs. Yeah, you that's know? true. Well, on that note, Luann's here. <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> the Lady Gang. Ooh, we are feeling Giovanni today. Our guest today is the original cast member, one of the most successful franchises in television history, The Real Housewives of New York. She was ranked as the number one housewife by TV Guide, topping all 46 other housewives. She starred in The Ultimate Girls Trip and also the most important thing that happened to me in the last year, Welcome to Crappy Lake, was so good and we need our second season immediately. She's got her hit songs, Money Can't Buy You Class, uh, Girl Code, and of course, Feeling Giovanni. And they've been streamed and downloaded tens of millions of times, resulting in her own Pandora station. She's been featured on The Today Show, The View, Access Hollywood, ET, Extra, E! News, Project Runway, The Mass Singer, New York Times, Vanity Fair, Hollywood Porter, People Magazine, and so much more. And she is on the road right now with her all-new cabaret, Mary F. Kill. Please welcome to the Lady Gang, the iconic Countess Luann. <laughs> Hello, Lady Gang. How are you? Welcome. <laughs> wow, that was quite an intro. I was impressed by that myself. I was like, you've, who is you've that person you're talking about? Life. Who is that that they're quite talking about? Is that me? It's not really even me. You're, you're pretty um, iconic. Do you, did you always feel like you were meant for fame show business like when you were like little baby Luann at six years old was she like oh my god I'm like the star well it was look at me look at me look at me because I grew up with six brothers and sisters I'm one of seven and um I always say that my family prepared me uh to being a nurse first of all um and to be prepared for the housewives of New York City Uh it came in really handy because you have to learn how to navigate people like you know like the tightrope walker and, you know, and the show 
has been my life. It's been 16 years as of a couple of days ago. Wow. Um, wow. I know, right? 16 years. And I feel blessed because I was in that show at a time when, you know, housewives were like, it's what was more like Sex in the City meets Desperate Housewives. You know, it was funny. It was quick-witted, fast-paced, and dynamic, like we are. And so it's changed so much in, in, over the years. Um, but I love that you're watching Crappy Lake because that is my personal favorite. Because so great. Listen, we get to go to a town to help them out after COVID. And we leave lasting things for them. You know, the dog run for the for the animal shelter, the playground for children, you know, helping the mayor to make his community whole again. It was such rewarding work. And that, I love that. I love that. And I, you know, I just... You know, I feel blessed that I can, you know, go from the housewives, do cabaret, which is my love affair with life. When you, when people buy, when people go, when they hear this and they're like, oh, she's coming to my city. I want to go like, explain what we get. We get, we buy our ticket. We sit down. Like what is a countess show all about? Well, well I'll tell you in brief, um, you come in in Toyota and you drive out of the Rolls Royce because <laughs> I went on a great show. That's what I do. <laughs> and people don't know what to expect. And guess what? You're like in my house on my living room couch. Sit down and let me entertain you. I'm going to feed you. You're going to get drinks. You're going to have the best time ever. And you, you're not going to take your eyes off of me because that's what happens. You know, because I opened with Mary F. Kill, which is my new song, uh -huh. which nobody's heard yet. There's men that I would marry. They give me such a thrill. There's men that I would F and men that I would kill. We all, now we're not killing anybody, but we're going to get rid of them, right? We want so, to, yeah. We talk so about killing the, so men the all the time. It's all about that. And I was inspired by my fans because I love my fans. And every show I did, I do a QA. Mary F. Kill Countess is a company every yeah. single, every single day. So I was like, that's my tour. Mary, yeah. who are we going to marry? Who are we going to Who are we going to kill? I also feel like you're doing so well in this venture because A, you're so passionate about it. It's like it oozes out of you. You can tell you just on stage, like I've seen clips of it. We've yet to be able to experience it in real life, which we will. We will be you doing will. that. Um, but also because, you know, we were recently on Bethany's podcast and we were talking about the Re Mount Rushmore of Faust Wives. I know. Yes. Yeah, and you made it because of all the housewives I think you've lived your life the most out loud and mm. you've been the most open and you've had the least amount of secrets. And I think that that's why we connect with you. That's why we find, we look to you in all those moments of like, what the fuck is this craziness going on? It's like, you're the touchstone of kind of putting it all out there. And in your cabaret, I imagine you get even more of that because it's not edited by Bravo. Guess what the phone is sitting on? Oh my gosh, Cost class the with the Countess book. I wrote a whole book about it, you know? I remember. Yeah, <laughs> back in 2009. I mean, 16 years I've been at this, okay? Right? Who lasts that long in TV with Andy Cohen? I mean, really? Um, not many. Not no. many. And you know what? Um, thank you for the compliment, first of all, um, because I do live my life according to how I want to live it, you know? And it, for me, that... Happiness shows all over your face. If you're on stage, and you're like, oh, God, what am I doing? No, I, you know, I was just saying to Roger, my assistant who I love, that who was late, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no prisoners. No prisoners. <laughs> that the, the hard part for me is getting ready. Makeup, uh, hair. Uh. It's like, okay, I'm going to remember this guy to remember that. Okay, we all get a little jittery before we go on stage. Okay, but I do an entire cabaret show, right? But when I get out and I'm singing Mary F. Kell mm -hmm. that I wrote, yeah. which will be out soon, you guys are the first to hear those lyrics that I just sang to you unless you come to my cabaret show. And when I'm out there, then I'm really living my best life, you know, because it's about my story and about my life. So it's hard to forget or fuck it up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think why the housewives have, have stayed and why you've stayed such a pillar in our lives um, is sort of that you 
pushed past the expiration date that Hollywood, and I mean this with love because like I'm, you know, living it as we're all living it, but it's like, they really tell you that like, you know, once you hit 33 or 35, it's like kind of over and you can't do Hollywood and you can't be sexy and you can't be a love interest and you can't be all these things. And you're someone that's like, no, 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 watch me. Um, what has that meant to you? Desmond Child wrote with me, Viva La Diva. When he met me, he's like, that song is like perfect for you. And listen, Viva La Diva, let the diva live in you. And that's what the song is all about. No matter what age you are. I said to him, I said, can you believe it? We're still working and still doing our thing at this point in our lives. And we're so blessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I never, I never take that for granted. But you know, you're only as great as you think you are. If you don't think you're great, nobody else is going to think you're great. So it's all about believing in yourself. Viva la diva. And you know what? I'm living my best decade of my life. My 50s for me are the best because I'm I'm doing exactly what I want, dating who I want. My children are grown and they're good. And I have the house I've always wanted. I have the people around me I've always dreamed of, which is my team of people that work with me in Cambrai and television also. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel very blessed and anyone can get that if they put out the right energy. It's all about your energy. Like we have a force field that we don't, that we forget about. Did you have like an aha moment? I am like, I'm thinking of you early housewives when you were married to the count and your life was this perfectly polished, you know, you're writing books on uh, etiquette. And I imagine a lot of your brain power went to how you were presenting to the world and what people thought of you. Or maybe you never did. That was just, I would imagine that's how I would be in that situation to now, you know, there were a lot of naysayers in the beginning of your cabaret days and now you're crushing it and selling out venues. Did you have a moment where you were like, I no longer care what people think. I'm going to live my truth or because I can't like I'm in my almost we're late thirties, almost forties. And I think I'm having a transition from not no longer caring what people think, but I'm not quite, haven't arrived yet. So how did you get there? I never wanted to watch the show at night because I wouldn't sleep. Because mm-hmm. I was like, did I see that? I should have said that. I should have done that. I should have looked that way. I should have walked through the door. I should have left the room. You know, it's there's always doubt, right? Mm-hmm. And so you get to a certain point in your life and, and you will get there like tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know what? If people aren't talking about you, you might as well be dead, which is one of my mentor's favorite things to say. And that's true. Let them talk. Because otherwise, what's the point? Right. Life is not worth living without a love affair somewhere, right? So, listen, you've seen me fall in love, fall down in the bushes. Oh, we see you. We see get the married, paparazzi photos, countess. <laughs> I've done it all, right? So, at a certain point, you're like, I don't give a shit anymore. And... That's what I love about um, Cabaret. Somebody asked me, oh, can you sing that song? Can you sing Flowers? I'm like, well, yeah. If I put it on TV, now I can't do that. But I can do whatever I want in that room. You're mine for the night. (laughs) We have a game for you. So one of the most iconic lines is be cool, don't be, like, uncool. All 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 uncool. uncool. And so we've made it a cool or uncool based on the pop culture things right now. And we're going to vote together on what we think. Are you guys ready? Ready. 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 Cool or uncool? Thruples. Well, it's not my thing. So uncool. Okay. Okay. Jack? I just think it takes way too much energy. I'm putting enough into the relationship. That's like a whole nother thing we're adding to the mix. Like, no, thank you. I'm too tired. Well, yep. yeah, that and, you know, three's a crowd. Three's uh-huh. a crowd. <laughs> it's, There's it's only un- room for one star in the relationship. That's right. <laughs> certainly for Luann. There's only one Beyonce. <laughs> okay, cool or uncool, buddy moons. Do you know what? what a buddy moon is? A buddy What's moon a buddy? is when you, it's when Jack Vanek had her honeymoon and she brought her friends and parents along. <laughs> yeah. <So> that- <laughs> No romance at all, just well, partying with your that's friends. That's uncool only because it shows that <laughs> do you really if, if you're in love with somebody, do you want other people around? No. Yes. No. <laughs> There's something wrong with that. <laughs> we spend enough time alone together that I'm like, I don't I don't need this right now. <laughs> well, I mean, you get you know, that says a lot to me. 
<laughs> says a lot to me. And I've done that before. I've, yeah. I've dated guys where I've had to bring other people because he bored me. So I had to bring oh. But, oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She, yeah. Well, Jack's just go. a social person. She's a seven on the Enneagram. <laughs> I think it's uh, it's uncool for me. I don't want buddies around even on the daily. Like on a Tuesday, I don't want any buddies. But that's just life. Um, Becca, buddy moons? Um, I sort of – see, Jack and I are both in marriages where we were together for so long and lived together for so long before the marriage even happened that like – we have gone on 8 million honeymoons yeah. that weren't branded honeymoons before the wedding. I mean, we went on our own honeymoon because buddy moons weren't a thing at that point, but I could have seen myself doing it because instead we just made friends with like these weird South African couples yeah. that were like wild and crazy. Yeah, we almost entered a doing. couple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool or uncool? Grandpa core. Grandpa core is the new style where you kind of dress like a grandpa. Big slouchy cardigan, <laughs> socks, sneakers. Luann's face is appalled. She's in her leopard, like, beautiful shirt. And her bold oh, lip. What? Now, you know, listen, I um, I left New York to move to Milan when I, in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And no I was deal. so enthralled by the level of elegance. And that's why I wrote the book, How to Live with Elegance of Third, because, I, you know, they want to leave their home looking anything like we would dress in America. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I love that. You yeah. know, the way they sip their coffee. Even the the sandwich at the gas station was delicious. Yeah. Um, there was a level of sophistication and elegance, which I love. You yeah. know, I, I will not date a man if his shoes are not right. Because yeah. it says everything about a man. If his shoes are not polished and he's not, then he's not polished. You know? How do you feel about a flip-flop? On a man. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we hate it more than anything. No, you can't no, show your feet as it's a man. upsetting. No, either you're barefoot or you have a nice loafer. I'm sorry. Yes. 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 A loafer. <laughs> okay, cool or uncool? Pickleball. Everyone's playing pickleball, ball, Countess. Will you play pickleball? I played pickleball and they were all 90. I love them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I love them, um, but I'm a tennis girl. So oh. I want to hit the ball, hit it hard. It's and get a sweat going and and really play. Yeah, yeah. pickleball is a little too slow for That's me. That's why your body looks the way that it does. I know we're not supposed to objectify women anymore, but goddamn, your body. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It just gets better. And That's what, what he said. That's are, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, I really, you know, my mother just turned 95. She came to my show at Foxwoods. Oh my gosh. Um, and so I go, so the next day I said, you know, I'm going to come and have lunch with you. And I was with a girlfriend of mine I grew up with since we're eight. And she drove me from Foxwood. She stayed the night with me. And then I said, we're going to go have lunch with my mother. She goes, should we pick her up? And I go, oh, I don't know. Let me call her. So I go, mom, because uh, she knows I'm meeting her at like one o'clock. I go, what, what are you doing? She goes, I'm in the car waiting. I said, it's one o'clock. I, I'm going to be there at one fifteen. So she goes, well, I'll meet you there. Bye. <laughs> she drives for lunch. She goes to get her nails done, her hair done at 95. Yeah. Now, wow. good jeans. We can't, we have to say good jeans. And, you know, uh, I work out a couple days a week and I'm very active. You know, I love, you know, I love go- going to the Hamptons. I got friends out there and, um, and I walk around the city a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I walk with Dorinda in Central Park sometimes, the two of us. Oh. You guys are the cutest. Jack sent us this morning the TikTok of you doing the oil rig <laughs> to Dorinda. <laughs> she was so, so cute. She was like, well, she is was it dangerous? So- <laughs> and she was so gung-ho on it. <laughs> she was down. <laughs> I knew that I could call D and she would pick up the box. If yeah. I called Sonia, she probably wouldn't pick up the box. So right. I knew I could count on D to pick up the phone and... I just love her reaction. It was so good. So authentic. Because it was totally off the cuff. I love it. All right. When we come back, we are housewife taglining with Countess. We are back. Some of the most iconic lines of all time. Um, And what I want, I gave the girls some homework. And we've decided, this is the first time. We have 800 episodes. We have multiple I mean, we've had everyone on and we are giving ourselves officially housewife headlines today. 
Um, so but my first question is, if you had to give yourself what, right, one right now at this current era of your life, what would it be, Countess? Mm. Life is a cabaret, my <laughs> friends. <laughs> I'll see you at the cabaret. Yeah. Love it. Life is a cabaret. Hell yes. We write our own story, right? So you got to write your story. What is it going to be? You only got oh today. Gosh. That's your that's that's your homework today. Oh, I love it. This love goes it. with mine. Okay, this is a segue to mine. My housewife tagline is, "I'm not on the A list, but I am a type." Oh, okay. You like it? Yeah. You know what I like better? At least I'm on a list. Oh, Ooh. I'm on a list. It's the D, <laughs> it's the D list, it, but it's it, I'm it still on matter. it. You're A list. You're your You're own A list. I've been to the Oscars and I've been to BravoCon. And let me tell you, I actually think that people care more about BravoCon. I, you know, oh, I, yeah. I mean that with love. But it's like, true. I, lo- it's I love both easy. words. I, lo- I love all the worlds of Hollywood. But in the general population, the A-list is reality stars. Well, like bra- Bravo liberties. Bravo liberties. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. People know more about and care more than... Oh yeah. About the other things. Okay, Jack, do you have a tagline? You got one? What's yours? Um, I don't remember this homework, but I'm going off the cuff of okay. what I think my tagline is, and it's you can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. Now, this can be literal <laughs> because love I you. love a day drink. I love you. <laughs> but like it can also be metaphorical because it's like drinking the alcohol of life. We're carping the diem. We're like really taking advantage of our time here, which goes back to, you know. You don't know if you have tomorrow. So right. right. But don't fall off the middle of the the, the highway. The rope. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yes. Right? The so that's always, you know, you sure you can drink all day, but you gotta be able to go out all night too. Do you know that's, what I mean? That's right. Mm-hmm. Last that's right. evening, you know. I love it. <laughs> love okay. it. Re- Rebecca Tobin. Small in stature, big on attitude. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, that is Thank it. You. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, Countess Luann, we <laughs> absolutely have love. It's been a dream of ours to have you for a long time. Um, I love after girls. you came and said hi at E, I was like, I literally have fought your team every day and was like, please, 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 please. Um, oh. Everyone who's listening, there are more dates and more dates coming for the cabaret. You can go to countessluann.com right now to purchase tickets, to request cities. And then you can follow the Countess, which I know you already do, but on social media, <laughs> Countess Luann. And uh, let's support her and let's all go feel Giovanni. And I love that like you can go in your glitter and love this and the new song. Um, we adore you. Thank you for coming. And we will see you next, see you Tuesday. next Tuesday. <laughs>